What is going on guys and welcome back to Simple Saber Metrics. Before we jump into today's video, I just wanted to thank you guys. 2020 has been a phenomenal year for the YouTube channel. Back in February, we hit 1,000 subscribers. Then by June, we had introduced the new logo and doubled that mark. And just a couple days ago, we surpassed 3,000 subscribers. Not only that, but over the last weekend, the total views on this channel since it has been created topped over 100,000. That's absolutely insane to me, and all I can say is thank you all for your incredible support. I truly appreciate all of you who tune in each week to learn a little bit more about the way the game is changing. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button. It really helps promote these videos to even more people who may be interested in data-driven baseball. Now, on to today's video. So. On the channel before, we have talked about several different pitch characteristics, everything from spin rate and velocity to spin direction, gyro degree, and of course, our horizontal and vertical movement charts. But we haven't talked about all of them together in one video, and how each of them affect one another. In today's video, we are going to do just that. But if at any point we touch on a topic today you want to learn more about, check out the links in the description for an in-depth video on each of the topics we cover today. To give you the gist of what this video is going to be about, we are going to cover what each of these metrics are, why they are important, and how you can apply them, starting with spin rate. Spin rate is defined as the measure of how fast the ball is spinning around its axis, measured in revolutions per minute, or RPM. If you picture this in slow motion, it's simply taking into account the number of times a pitch completes a full rotation on its path to the plate, then divides that number by the fraction of minutes it takes for the pitch to get to the catcher's glove. This is important because it helps you understand what ways a pitcher can best attack a hitter based on their arsenal. Spin rate isn't something that can be trained without the use of illegal substances, so it truly acts as a fingerprint for how guys can best use their stuff. Let me show you an example. The average MLB spin rate on a fastball is about 2200 revolutions per minute. Each pitch falls due to gravity, but its spin rate helps determine how much. Our average spin rate pitch would end up falling exactly how much we would anticipate and end up directly down the pipe here. But what if we increase our spin rate to an above average spin rate, say 2400 on that fastball? Well, now the pitch would fall less due to gravity because of the spin's effect on the ball's course, making that pitch rise just a little bit more, aka the ball's falling less, into the upper part of the zone. Then, as you'd imagine, a pitch with lower than average spin rate would end up lower in the zone due to its spin rate. But spin rate is not good or bad. Like I said, it's more like a fingerprint. For a lower than average spin rate guy, he should focus on pounding lower in the zone because his pitchers are going to drop more than the hitter is used to. And pitchers with above average spin rate should throw up in the zone because their ball drops less than the hitter is used to. So that is what average spin rate is for the fastball and how you can use it best. But what about the other pitches? Here are the numbers of the average spin rates on MLB pitches for the four major pitch types. But I know what you're thinking. Those numbers still apply to me if I'm not a big leader? That's where Bauer units come in. Think of this as a more advanced version of spin rate. Spin rate is highly affected on how fast a pitcher can throw, so this unit takes the velocity out of the equation in order to normalize our data for all different kinds of velocities. It's calculated by taking your spin rate divided by each pitch's speed. You can take the averages of an entire data set too, if you don't wish to calculate this for every single pitch. Here are the average numbers you'll get by putting your information into this equation. See where you stand. If you're above these ranges, you have above average spin. If you're below, you have below average spin. Pitch accordingly. And like I said in the beginning, if you have any questions on this stuff, there will be a ton of links in the description with full videos on each of these topics, Bauer units included. Next, onto velocity, which is something that most people are pretty familiar with before diving into any of the more advanced metrics we will discuss today. To make sure we're on the same page here, velocity is simply the measure of how fast a pitch is moving in miles per hour. When most people think of velocity, all they think about is that if a pitch is faster, it is better. And to that I say, yes and no. Once you're at a certain point in your career, yes, I would agree that if you can throw a pitch with the same movement profile harder, then that would be a better version of that pitch. But how can you get there if you're a younger athlete? We aren't going to dive deep onto this topic here, but increasing velocity is a little bit like a pyramid. You need a good base foundation in order to bridge the gap to the next means of training. The first and most important step to gaining velocity is simply maturity. As you get older, to a certain point of course, you will throw harder. Everybody matures at a different rate, but before you can see the benefits from the other areas of training here, you first need to simply continue to grow. 
Once you're in that college to high school range, then you can begin to get after it in the weight room and focus on mobility. That is where you will see the biggest results if you want to throw harder. But all of that comes before going on a specific velocity throwing program to try and throw harder. You need that base before you can continue up to the peak. Keep that in mind when you're working with especially younger athletes. But that isn't the only way velocity can be used. Here's a chart that shows you the ideal velocity differences by pitch type as shown by subtracting these numbers from your average fastball velocity. Now we can move on to spin axis or direction and tilt. This is a metric that as you can tell is labeled several different ways, but it's all measuring the same thing. And that is the angle of the pitch after it has been released. Typically it is measured as time on the clock, but you may also see it described in degrees as well. This is all shown below. This metric is incredibly important because it has the largest effect on the way each pitch moves. To go through an example of how this is calculated, imagine a ready throwing a pitch with almost pure backspin straight over the top. This pitch's spin direction would be around 1230, or about a 190 degree tilt. The minutes here on our spin direction are what typically trip people up, but all it's telling you is how far in between two hour marks a pitch's spin direction falls. In this case, you can see that it's directly halfway between 12 and 1. I've done quite a few videos talking about this subject in the past, but to oversimplify the way you can think about this metric, right-handed pitchers typically have fastballs and changeups that fall into this section of the clock, and sliders and curveballs opposite of that. Of course, to see this for lefties, all you have to do is flip the script. Alright, now we're going to move on to gyro degree and spin efficiency. This is one that I would highly recommend checking out the in-depth video tutorial if you feel like you don't quite understand after watching this piece, but I'm going to do my best to cover the basics here. Gyro degree is defined as the degree of tilt a pitch's axis has forward or backwards. It's used to calculate spin efficiency, which can give us the amount of spin that is actually aiding in each pitch's movement, called useful spin. We just covered spin direction, which is shown from behind the baseball. This metric is very similar. You just need to change your perspective to above the ball. If a pitch is released and the axis it is spinning around is perpendicular to the direction it is moving, as we see here if the pitch was moving from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen, this pitch would have zero degrees of gyro spin and thus 100% spin efficiency. This happens when a pitcher throws basically straight through the baseball. However, if that mark changes and you can picture this as someone who is coming more around the ball, that angle will change. In our example here, we'll say it's about 45 degrees. One thing to note, the spin efficiency on a pitch with a 45 degree angle is about 40%, although that is halfway in between 0 and 90 degrees, which is the minimum and maximum of gyro degree, they aren't a 1 to 1 ratio, so keep that in mind when comparing the two. This metric is important because it can help you measure how much a pitcher is using their spin rate. If a pitch has an above average spin rate and a lower spin efficiency, they aren't maximizing the amount of movement they can get, meaning this is an area you can work on improving. Here's a table with ideal spin efficiency ratings for each of the four major pitch types. And finally, on to the granddaddy of them all, horizontal and vertical movement. This is the numerical and graphical representation of the amount of spin induced movement each pitch has aka we will be ignoring the effects of gravity on the pitch and just focusing on how a pitcher releases a pitch and how that alters its movement profile. This is a combination of all of the metrics we've discussed in this video. Let me show you. A pitch that would simply be falling with gravity with absolutely no spin on it would fall at the 0-0 point on our graph. Spin rate and spin efficiency play a large role in determining how far up each pitch moves away from this point. A pitch with below average spin or lower spin efficiency would only climb up a little bit. But a pitch with a higher spin rate and spin efficiency may move all the way up here. But pitchers often have some amount of arm slide run on their fastballs. Well, where it lands on this chart depends largely on their spin direction. If a pitch has a little bit of arm slide run thrown by a guy with a three quarter arm slide, you may see it around this point on our graph. A pitch with straight backspin would fall on the axis with a 12 o'clock spin direction, and a pitch with some hard side run would fall over here at about our 130 mark, and that's all there is to it. Now, I know that I've thrown a lot of stuff at you in this video, so I'll be keeping this closing bit short here. The goal of this video was to give you a brief introduction to all of the biggest players in the pitch design metrics field, and hopefully give you some direction when you're first getting started. If you still have questions about any of this stuff, check out the description for in-depth dives on all of the different topics we talked about today. 
and if you can't find it there, leave a comment and I'll do my best to get back any answers you may need. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more simple saber metrics, please subscribe. Click the video on the left for more baseball animations or the video on the right to check out my new vlog. Leave a comment and a like down below to show your support and I will see you next Wednesday with a new baseball animation.